I know everybody in here has probably been through some trials and tribulations in your life, especially during the holiday season. I just want to encourage everybody that you are so much more than that, especially us as inmates. You know, we got a lot to be thankful for. So just listen to the words of the song, man. And, um, it's a part of my heart, and I hope y'all like it. Check this out. I am so much. Then this number on my ID, I am. So much. Then your excuse not to like me, I am. So much. Then this charge to my conviction, I am. So then all your negative predictions, I am. So much. Then just the title of offender, I am. So much. Then last place on your agenda, I am. So You're just a neighborhood felon, and I am. So then your reason for yelling, and I am. Then your pill line oppressor, and I am. So then your lay down letter, and I am. So then the human, your dog, you see me, I'll be a child of God. And the choir sings. So much yes, I am so much. So much more. Yes, I am so much. So much more. Yes, I am so much. So much more. That so much. Yes, I am so much. You see, I'm so much. I'm so much. Listen, you are. Then a high school dropout, and you are. Then those decisions to cop out, and you are. Then those thoughts of defeated, and you are. Then a child that's mistreated, and you are. Then that label of thug, and you are. Then your addictions to drugs, and you are. Then just a petty gang member, and you are. Then empty bottles of liquor, and you are. Then all those late night cries, and you are. Then your thoughts of suicide, you are. Then the uneducated, when we see you, we thank God you made it. Choir, help me sing. Cause you are so much. Yes, you are so much. Yes, you are so much. And everybody is. Yes, you are so much. Yes, you are so much. Yes, you are so much. Good morning. We are grateful to gather online this morning as the Unitarian Universalist Society for a time of music, inspirational words, reflection, and connection. I'm Peggy Garrigus, Director of Congregational and Community Engagement and your Zoom host for this morning. If you're visiting our service today, welcome. We hope you find the service meaningful. As Unitarian Universalists, we don't all believe the same things, but we have six sources of our living tradition. One of those is the direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, which moves us to a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. Today, we especially reflect on that source through music making as a means for building inner peace and communities of care. Good morning, I'm Valerie Bowman, a member of the Unitarian Universalist Society and your worship associate this morning. I am so happy to be here with you virtually and to have our special guest, Dr. Mary Cohen, who is an associate professor of music education at the University of Iowa with a joint appointment in the College of Education and School of Music. She researches music making and well-being songwriting and collaborative communities. She's going to lead us in singing and reflecting on music making as a means for building inner peace and communities of care, including the work she's done with the Oakdale Choir. The choir is made up of men incarcerated in the Oakdale prison and people from the community and is founded on the concept of interconnection called Ubuntu. We also have another special guest today, Dr. Jan Goss, who's a therapist 
and ordained member of the Plum Village Mindfulness Tradition of Thich Nhat Hanh. Jan has been visiting here from England and is staying with Carol Throckmorton, a UU member, while she's here. She will share some words of her teacher, who died January 22nd at the age of 95. We also are happy to welcome Reverend Dr. June Boyce Tillman from Winchester, England, who wrote the song, Space for Peace, that we'll sing today. And now, let us worship together. Bodhisattva of Respect. There is a Bodhisattva whose name is Sada Paribhuta, the Bodhisattva of constant respect, who never underestimates or disparages anyone. The action of that Bodhisattva is to remove the complex of worthlessness and low self-esteem. This Bodhisattva acts to bring the message of hope and confidence and remind all of us that we are a wonder of life. Sada Paribhuta can see the seed of awakening in every person. All of us in our life as a human being will have to experience a moment of humiliation at one point or another. I have also gone through that. We may be victims of discrimination, abuse or injustice, but with the insight that no matter what, you still have your Buddha nature within, you are free. You are free from the feeling of being a victim and you can be a Bodhisattva equipped with enormous energy, with the power of changing your life and even the power of changing the lives of those who have harmed you. According to Buddhist psychology, we all have the seed of compassion, but we also have a seed of violence. If you happen to be born in a kind environment where people are compassionate and water the seed of compassion in you, then your seed of compassion will grow bigger and you will become a compassionate person. But if you lived in another kind of environment where nobody knows how to water the seed of compassion in you, then the seed of compassion in you will be very small. The practice of mindfulness consists of watering the seed of understanding and compassion every day so we can restore balance between compassion and violence. Um, 
eso. Apart we can rise up, I will hold your hand. When apart we can rise up, we will come together. As Unitarian Universalist, we light a flame within a chalice as a symbol of sanctuary and safety to unite us in our worship and to remind us of our ongoing search for the light of truth. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the wonder and mystery of this great gift. So let us now kindle the flame of our liberal religious heritage and renew our covenant of mutual love and care. Love is our doctrine, the quest for truth is our sacrament, and service is our prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, and to serve those in need. This we promise, this we covenant with life and one another. Each week, when we light a candle for justice and healing, we hold space for our understanding of interdependence, that our liberation is bound up with every other person's liberation, and our feelings of rage and heartbreak over the ongoing pandemics of illness and racism, the devastation of climate chaos, and the waves of trauma washing over our world. We light this candle to help us hold space together for processing what is happening in our lives and in our world, and to remind ourselves that together we are creating resilience and hope. Today, as we light this candle, we're particularly mindful of people who are incarcerated, people who work in prisons, people who are survivors of crimes, people who work in legal contexts, and with the hope for transformative change toward more healing circles of accountability to engage with conflict management. After I light this candle, let's hold a time of silence to listen to our hearts and bodies, or perhaps to lift up prayers. As Shin Wei and Alex play our centering music, please take this time to sink more deeply into the presence of each other, 
joining in the singing if you wish. If you're online participating in the service and you'd like, please turn on your video cameras and spend this time beholding each other's faces and each other's presence. And please feel free to use the chat to let us know that your chalice is lit. Next, for Time for All Ages, we're going to hear a story that is written by Amanda Gorman. She spoke The Hill We Climb at President Biden's inauguration, and she's the National Youth Poet Laureate. We'll now hear her story, Change Sings. Hello and welcome back to another edition of Sankofa Read Aloud. Today's story is titled Change Sings, a children's anthem. Words by Amanda Gorman, pictures by Lauren Long. I not only hope that you enjoy this amazing story, but that you also support the author with a purchase of this book. I can hear change humming in its loudest, proudest song. I don't fear change coming. And so I sing along. I scream with the skies of red and blue streamers. I dream with the cries of tried and true dreamers. I'm a chant that rises and rings. There is hope where my change sings. Though some don't understand it, those windmills of mysteries, I sing with all the planet and its hills of histories. I hum with a hundred hearts, each of us lifting a hand. I use my strengths and my smarts, take a knee to make a stand. I'm bright as the light each day brings. There is love where my change sings. I show others tolerance, though it might take some courage. I don't make a taller fence, but fight to build a better bridge. I talk not only of distances, from where and how we came. I also walk our differences to show that we are the same. I'm a movement that roars and springs. There's a wave where my change sings. Change sings where? There, inside me, because I'm the change I want to see. As I grow, it grows like seeds. I am just what the world needs. I'm the voice where freedom rings. You're the love your bright heart brings. We are the wave starting to spring 
for we are the change we sing. We're what the world is becoming and we know it won't be long. We all hear change strumming. Won't you sing along? Please call me by my true names, by Thich Nhat Hanh. Don't say that I will depart tomorrow. Even today, I am still arriving. Look deeply. Every second, I am arriving to be a bud on a spring branch, to be a tiny bird with still fragile wings, learning to sing in my new nest, to be a caterpillar in the heart of a flower to be a jewel hiding itself in a stone. I still arrive in order to laugh and to cry, to fear and to hope. The rhythm of my heart is the birth and death of all that is alive. I am a mayfly metamorphosing on the surface of the river, and I am the bird that swoops down to swallow the mayfly. I am a frog swimming happily in the clear water of a pond, and I am the grass snake that silently feeds itself on the frog. I am the child in Uganda, all skin and bones, my legs as thin as bamboo sticks, and I am the arms merchant selling deadly weapons to Uganda. I am the 12 year old girl refugee on a small boat who throws herself into the ocean after being raped by a sea pirate. And I am also the pirate, my heart not yet capable of seeing and loving. I am a member of the Politburo with plenty of power in my hands. And I am the man who has to pay his debt of blood to my people dying slowly in a forced labor camp. My joy is like spring, so warm, it makes flowers bloom all over the earth. My pain is like a river of tears, so vast it fills the four oceans. Please call me by my true names so I can hear all my cries and my laughter at once, so I can see that my joy and pain are one. Please call me by my true names so I can wake up and the door of my heart can be left open, the door of compassion. Thank you. My name's Mary Cohen, and it's an honor to be here today celebrating peace, inner peace. The Oakdale Community Choir, which has occurred 11 years prior to the pandemic, with 175 different inside singers, 140 different outside singers, our goals continue to be building communities of caring, caring within ourselves, caring within our own communities and caring in the broader globe. We've not been able to sing together as a whole choir since March 3rd of 2020. Since then, Warden Jim McKinney retired unexpectedly in May of 2020. Outside choir members and students in my peace building class have met on Zoom. We sang at the Peace Pole Dedication Ceremony on the International Peace Day, September 21. And at that event, we actually provided a purple shirt ceremony to a formerly incarcerated choir member. When we sing in the prison, the men and the inside singers wear green shirts and the outside singers wear purple shirts. So as a reintegration ritual, we gave Jeff Luttrell a purple choir t-shirt, which was very exciting. We also, met just yesterday in preparation for an event on April 29 that you are all welcome to join. Maybe you've heard about the Anne Frank tree planting ceremony. Thanks to 
German professor Kirsten Kampf Bale, the one of the saplings from the tree in Amsterdam where Anne Frank looked at for solace during the Holocaust is going to be, it's one of 13 trees that will be planted across the country. So we'll be singing a song I wrote called May My Tears Water a Sapling. And we welcome people to join us at that event. And if you would like to join the choir in singing, let me know. I also have been able to facilitate two classes of peace building students since the pandemic, one on Zoom and one in person. And in those classes, the core project of the class is to build inner peace building projects. We read The Moral Imagination, which is by John Paul Lederach, with the general idea that we first need to build peace within ourselves. And from that space of micro peace, we're able to, of inner peace, we'll be able to build communal peace among our communities and eventually beyond that. Also, the students in the peace building class have had pen pals with men in the choir who have been in the peace building class. And that's a really strong need because currently in the prison, they're so short staffed that they are on lockdown about 4.30 p.m. every day. So they have been in a strong need for connections to people outside of the prison. Other events that we've been working on, a group in New York called Heartbeat Opera did a revision of the Beethoven opera Fidelio, where they collected video footage from six different prison choirs and four different videos of four different um, prisons, choir, prison choirs singing. And the, what they did was they took this audio recordings of the song um, Ovecha Lust, the prisoner's chorus, and stitched together the different audio recordings from the prison choirs and used that in their stage production. So they're doing a revamp of that in New York at the Met Museum with it opening this Thursday. So still trying to move forward. So that group again is called Heartbeat Opera. A number of educational programs, including the University of Iowa Center for Human Rights, we read the book Halfway Home by jo Dr. Jonathan Rubin Miller and did a number of programs. You can go to the Center for Human Rights YouTube channel to connect more with some of the amazing things that have happened. And I highly recommend that book, Halfway Home. A colleague at Coe College is doing a film discussion soon on the movie 13th. And I also, in this time of pandemic, made a lot of progress on a book that I wrote. It is available forthcoming with my co-author, Stuart Paul Duncan. The book's titled Music Making in U.S. Prisons, Listening to Incarcerated Voices. But perhaps the biggest issue we have right now is this beautiful concept of Ubuntu and advocacy. Ubuntu is the idea that who we are is how we relate to other people. And there is a strong need for us, and I think people in this community are very aware of this, but we need to be talking more about how prisons and policing is a legacy of slavery. Just yesterday, uh, Dan Colon, who's working on a film about the Oakdale Choir, the two, and I went to Davenport and saw Arnold Grice in person. You'll be hearing him speak in just a moment. Arnold shared quite a few stories of basic race issues happening within the prisons, where basically his white colleagues in prison were able to get their release much faster than the black people in prison, and a lot of restrictions that occur, even when they get to the space of being in a halfway house. There's so much work that needs to be done. And in this community, we do have Inside Out Reentry, and that organization is preparing for their first reentry home. So there are some, some good things happening, but so much more work. The Iowa Justice Action Network is working on three different bills, a compassionate release bill, second chance commutation bill, and an accomplice culpability bill. So big gratitude to Sue Hutchins and the work she's doing. So just one more note of a book. <laughs> Actually, I brought three other books. <laughs> I love books. Did you know that? Um, one I highly recommend, and I think Alex is going to put this on the website for the Unitarian website. Um, it's titled, We Do This Till We Free Us. The subtitle is Abolitionist Organization and Transforming Justice by Miriam Kaba. 
So when we talk about abolition of the prison industrial complex, what we're really referring to, if you look at critical resistance understanding of the prison industrial complex, they define that as overlapping interests of government and industry that use surveillance, policing, imprisonment as solutions to economic, social, and political problems. So people that are working on abolition like Miriam Kaba, Bettina Love, who wrote, we want to do more than survive abolitionist teaching and the pursuit of educational freedom. And Dorica Purnell, who wrote, becoming abolitionists, police, protest, and the pursuit of freedom. When we th talk about this idea of abolitionist thinking, what it, we mean is a lot more than stopping police, stopping prisons. It's thinking in ways that are a lot more constructive to how we can build those senses of inner peace, communal peace, and maybe, for example, automatically calling 911 may not be the immediate result, re resolution to a problem. Maybe we need to be thinking way more critically on what the needs are of our community and looking at like what's happening in halfway houses, to what extent are people that are readjusting from being in prison getting the support that they need. So if nothing else, when we reflect on these ideas of prison abolition, ideas of decarceration and even excarceration, which would be things like a community mediation center, we can think of the language we're using when we're interacting with others. A quote from Stuart and I's book is, the words we use infuse or confuse the actions we choose. So when we think about the things we want to do, this idea of change things, be the change, what is it that we want to see in the world? So how can I frame that? Like, rather than reducing recidivism, how can we support people that are released from prison? Which might mean creating better space for housing, for employment, and even as simple as using people-centered words. People released from prison, men, women, rather than offender, survivors of crime, listening and learning how we can create spaces for healing. Next in our service, we're going to get to hear a video from Arnold, the gentleman who sang the song at the beginning of the service so much more. Arnold, um, the video that we're going to hear, the volume is pretty quiet, and we have it turned up as loud as we can in this space. So I invite you to um, turn up your volume at your own space, as well as use the closed captioning unit on your computer. So we'll now listen to some words of reflection. Arnold sang in the Oakdale Choir from 2011 to 2014. So here is Arnold Grice. My name is Arnold Grice. I used to be a member of the choir from 2011 to probably like about 2014, I transferred out. Um, I was first introduced to Mary by the songwriters workshop. Um, they had a songwriters workshop that was meeting like on Wednesdays. And it was a little course to come down and to uh, work on songs. And then, you know, we would pair up in groups and we would, we would think about choruses, hooks and ideas. And then at the end of the, the songwriters workshop, we would all take the songs and we would record them. Peter would come in and he would hook up his uh, equipment and whoever played music, we would collaborate. Some people did stuff by piano. Some guys had, uh, you know, bass guitars, you know, um, whatever ideas you basically could come up with, um, you were given the opportunity to, to produce a song. And then from there, um, I was invited to join the choir. And uh, I think one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this video uh, or to, to make something short was first of all, was just to thank God for Mary L. Cohen, you know, Dr. Mary Cohen. Um, she has been a blessing to my life and like to so many other guys' life in the choir, you know what I mean? Um, 
Shout out to all the guys, um, professors, and all the other volunteers that was coming in from the University of Iowa, too. Um, we had the writer's workshop, Mary Traxel, Jim Brown. Um, so we was writing short stories. And then we had the, the songwriter's workshop. Then we had the choir. And so the um, reason why I thank God for them is because, you know, being in prison and having these people take out time in their life to volunteer, to come out and to support us and to help us do something positive, you know, it was a blessing. And uh, for some of the guys, the only visits that they got was the choir members. And so, you know, um, whereas my mom used to visit me like every other weekend because she lived in the Quad Cities, you know, you still had guys who didn't have family members that did not come and visit them. And so uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, you know, that was their visits. The, um, you know, the choir and uh, the volunteers became our family. And so <clears throat> I thank Mary and I thank all the rest of the volunteers. And the reason why I feel like it changed my life is because, you know, when you're in prison, sometimes you can be discouraged, you know, um, there's so much going on, you know, sometimes the officers, you know, they, they talk kind of rough to you, you know what I mean? And they make you feel like crap. Some of us was having a long time to do, you know, and, you know, and so you can get really stressed. A lot of times people feel like you're in prison that you don't really have a care in the world, but sometimes you stress. And so the choir was an outlet and um, that outlet helped me think. And see, a lot of times on the podcast, I, I try to tell Mary and, and my choir family about where I came from. You know, um, we grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, and you know, some of the apartments here in the Quad Cities, Rock Island, Illinois. Um, however, I did come from an urban neighborhood. And so a lot of times uh, I grew up in neighborhoods where we sold drugs. We were gang related, we, we carried weapons you know, and so then to be in prison, to have that life crash on you and then have somebody else give you another outlet, you know. And so what I mean by that is that the choir gave us a vision, you know what I mean? Um, and instead of me, the things that I was used to doing or the things I was used to seeing or saying, you know, now um, you got Mary and you got these choir people and so She's taught me how to take these ideas and not just bottle them up inside, but get them out now. You know what I mean? And so now I'm the writer's workshop. I'm writing short stories. I'm writing stories. Now they showing me how to edit it. And so now I'm looking like what a book would look like on paper. You know what a short story would look like on paper. Um, I always knew how to rap, but now I'm making poetry. And so it went from me doing poetry to making a poetry book and then my boss allowing me to put it on the units for other inmates to read. And so now we in the choir and we making songs and people are filling up the gym and now you got people coming in from the outside. And so um, what the choir allowed me to do was take things that was going on in my life or things that was going on in the world and write about it and put it to music. And then it just started opening up to like choruses and hooks. And then I started thinking like, okay, this song that I'm gonna write right now, how would the choir sound doing the chorus? You know what I mean? And so I can still hear their voice today. You know what I mean? So many people in the choir, blessings to you guys and um, whoever else is responsible for this that's at the church. Um, I just wanna say thank you because you know, a lot of times when I write, I could see Mary you know, conducting the choir. I can hear us. How are we gonna sing this? How are we gonna bring this to life? And so I would always take us, some that I was going through, like the Sandy Hook, about what was happening with those kids. God woke me up at three o'clock in the morning. And after I started watching CNN and I started seeing parents like so worried and running to uh, the ambulance or running to the police trying to figure out what was happening with their kids, I was able to write and try to plug into how they would feel. And then I bring it to the choir. The next thing you know, we get some music. And by the time we get done sharing these ideas and by the time we get done um, practicing and practicing with Mary, you know what I mean? And that smile that she's got, man, she's so vibrant and, you know, she brings so much life. She gives 150% to 200% every time. And by the time we get done with it, um, it's life changing. And now there's something that 
the world could use or it's something that the world needs. You know what I mean? And now she's making me feel like I got a calling or like I got a gift. And so I thank God first, but I thank him for Mary Cohen and I thank him for the rest of the choir members. And whoever uh, is responsible for this, you know, um, there's so much that we can do together you know what i mean thank you for your support thank you for you know what i mean reaching out to me asking me to be a part of this and getting involved because you know right now I'm, I'm i'm halfway to freedom i'm in the halfway house and so you know this was an opportunity for me to sit down and and do something positive and and to reach out and and try to help and so i want to get the public speaking going um i know she's got a lot of stuff going with the book and so Thank you, Dr. Mary Cohen. Um, thank you to everybody that's here, that's at the church, everybody that's viewing this, um, that want to get involved, that want to help me. I want to help too. I want to give back. So as much love as y'all giving to me, I want to multiply it and give it back to somebody else, you know? And uh, she said that um, I was able to give you a little something about this song I was writing. And so I'll just kind of tell you how um, this one came about. When George Floyd was going through his situation, when, when the court case started, um, there were like two other shootings <clears throat> that happened. And, you know, it was some other black guys with police officers and stuff like that. And so when I came up with this song, the first thing I did again was I heard the choir. I heard the choir singing behind me and I can just think of like, how would I just, if I would bring this to them, how would me and Mary get the music and then get the choir involved and bring it to life. And so this song is called, Why Don't They Love Us? And um, I'm just gonna give you like the chorus and then I'm gonna give you the verse and then we'll conclude. I think it'll probably be 10 minutes. <clears throat> and the chorus says, um, Why don't they love us? Why don't they care? Where is the justice? How much pain must we bear? And why don't they love us? Why won't they make it right? Where is the justice? Some respect for our black lives. Listen, dear God, our creator is some haters on earth. How ironic that black and brown really get treated like dirt. And it hurts to put in work pushing this country to great. But a man's color of skin could lead to two different fates. Get our rate, go ahead and march, make a million more signs. But unless we change their hearts, we can't share the same mind. And I'm fine if you don't like me, but just tell me why. It's a fact that when you black, it's justified when you die. And I try to etch it out, but every time that I'm stopped, I suffer PTSD from these crooked type cops. And my thoughts on the police in this unequal treatment, some of y'all are like a gang and in the hood we keep beefing. So let the preachers keep preaching and my mamas keep praying, but give the glory to God to avenge what I'm saying. But yet I'm thinking in your face to break the chains of oppression. Now let America know I'm asking the question, why don't they love us? And why don't they care? And where is the justice? How much pain must we bear? And why don't they love us? Why won't they make it right? And where is the justice? Some respect for our black lives. And so when I wrote that and I said, I can hear the choir, it's because me and the choir is family. And so when I talk about lives and why don't they love us and why don't they care, you know, they cared about me and we share these stories. Everything that I, I, I went through and everything I've been through, I can bring it to the choir and they can show me how to channel that energy, put it in a song and give it to the world. And then somebody else would always feel it and it would always touch somebody else. And so thank you, Dr. Mary L. Cohen, for being a blessing. All the choir members, I salute y'all. I love y'all to death. And um, hopefully this was a blessing to y'all. And hopefully somebody else can be blessed by it, that we can continue to be blessing to others. God bless you guys. I love y'all. Peace. How we give what we do with our lives, our time, and our resources is a reflection of our values. In response to the abundance we are blessed with, every week this congregation donates generously to organizations in the community whose work aligns with our values and principles. Our community partner agency this month is United Action for Youth, which works with youth, parents, 
and the local community to provide services for all teenagers 12 to 18 years old. It's a place for youth to have a voice and give back creatively to their community. On the screen, you'll see instructions for how to give online, or you can take the time to write a check and address an envelope to UUS to be put into the mail. You may assist our community partner, contribute to the congregation to provide additional support for our operating expenses or contribute towards your pledge to our society. The offering is a sign of commitment to this free congregation, which is almost completely supported by the voluntary generosity of all who join us. As we give and receive the offering, may we be transformed by our giving and may the world be transformed by our gifts. Nurturing gratitude and how we understand and express interdependence is part of how we live into our Unitarian Universalist faith. I May mean, what has been shared today, and so much has been shared today, help us more fully affirm our interconnection and live into love and justice. Immediately after the service, we'll have time for all to join in conversation and community online. And now to close our service today, we will sing, Be the change. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. And change will come to you. 
want to hear in the world be the voice you want to hear in the world be the voice you want to hear in the world and change will come to you be the light you want to shine in the world be the light you want to shine in the world be the light you want to shine in the world and change will come to you be the change you want to see in the world be the change you want to see in the world be the change you want to see in the world and change will come to you join me in the words for extinguishing the chalice we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. All these we carry in our hearts and in our minds until we are together again. And now for our benediction from a song by Dorothy Whiston and Mary Cohen. May the hope that comes from caring help us to be more daring as we seek to build up others and we share our lives. May we listen clear and clean with care and curiosity. May we support inside and out with ripples of care. I'm grateful, Jack. 